For RCR TV, I'm Joey Jackson. On this edition of Cell Tower News, we delve into the mysteries of dark fiber and get an insider's perspective on backhaul from George Townsend of Tower Cloud. Today's episode is brought to you by Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.net. For 20 years, Nate has been the undisputed global leader in safety, standards, and education for the wireless and broadcast communications infrastructure industries. All right, welcome back to Cell Tower News, where we discuss the backbone of the wireless industry. Before we get into the heart of our discussion, let's take a look at what's going on in the news with Jared Matula, writer of Cell Tower Rap Column on RCRWireless.com. Jared, what's going on? In this week's news, a man is in stable condition after falling from a tower in West Virginia. The man sustained injuries to his head, according to local officials. There is not much else known about the incident except that it happened at the same site where a tower collapsed in February of 2014, killing three people. The man's name has not been released. But in more uplifting news, a climber in Tennessee helped find two missing children last week. Corey Fitzpatrick was installing equipment atop a tower in Mulberry Mountain when he spotted two children who had been missing for more than 12 hours. The climber had been alerted to the missing children situation by local authorities on his way to the work site that morning, but never actually expected he would play a vital role in their location. Despite his efforts, Fitzpatrick remains incredibly humble about the whole ordeal, but while he may not want to take credit, we would like to send out our respect and gratitude for the work you did. Thank you, Corey, for the work you did spotting those kids and the work you do every day help keeping us connected. Whoop! Well, that's it for me. For more cell tower-related content, check out rcrwireless.com. Back to you, Joey. All right, thanks for that, Jared. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of the show. At CTIA Supermobility last week, I was able to catch up with George Townsend, Senior VP of Business at Tower Cloud, to talk about the state of the wireless industry, including trends in dark fiber and wireless backhaul. Let's take a look at that interview. So I'm here at CTIA with George Townsend, VP of Business Development, Senior VP of Business Development at Tower Cloud. So, George, first of all, just tell me a little bit about your background and about Tower Cloud. Okay. Um, I started my early career with a utility that formed a SELEC corporation. Um, from there, we sold the assets of that company, and Ron Mudry and myself, our CEO, went out and formed Tower Cloud, a backhaul company. Uh, we were formed in 2006, primarily to focus on serving uh, the wireless uh, operators and we basically provide an end-to-end -end backhaul solution from the cell site to the MSC or switch for the mobile carriers. And so your CEO, Ron uh, Mudry, Mudry is going to spe be speaking at the Tower and Small Cell Summit about the state of the wireless ecosystem. What is the state of the wireless ecosystem right now? Well, let me start with it should be a very interesting panel. We have one of the major network operators, Dave Mayo from T-Mobile, that will be on the panel, plus two of the f major fiber backhaul providers, as well as other suppliers on the panel. Um, you know, they'll be joining us to basically talk about the ecosystem and how it's going to provide the capacity and the quality for the future of the industry. And so, are we in for any earth-shattering news? Well, from a network perspective, I think the challenges of rapidly scaling small cells um, will probably dominate the discussion. And with small cells, what the big issue is, is it's an underlay to the macro environment. And there's a lot of capacity being driven by all the cell phones and tablets and streaming video. And there's a need to address that capacity, but also with a high quality. And you mentioned small cells, but what about uh, CloudRan and Outdoor DAS? Well, CloudRan and Outdoor DAS all play a role in this evolving ecosystem. You have the macro environment that was basically developed to carry our cell phones as we travel down the roads. Now that we're all congesting and using these devices for more things, the ecosystem is changing. That's why you need the small cell for the micro underlay to that. Um, what Cloud RAN does, or CRAN, centralized RAN, is allow the carrier the opportunity to lower their capex and combine that one operating box with multiple um, macro towers. As we move to the cloud RAN, that's more a software-defined element of which 
we will use more and more software which helps the operating expenses of the carriers and they can minimize their cost to deploy multiple technologies. And so Ron's also going to be talking, he's a busy man, he's going to be talking at another panel discussion about macro tower backhaul. What do you see as the most important issue that he's going to discuss there? Again, I believe that's going to end up being a mix of fiber and microwave discussion. They'll have a broad mixture of those talents on the panel. And again, it will come back to capacity and how that's scaled um, and how it evolves through new technologies. And so speaking of backhaul, uh, as the networks get denser and access to fiber becomes more difficult, um, do you see this as an opportunity for alternatives such as microwave and radio to kind of take hold in the market or do you see fiber just winning out no matter what? I think at the end fiber will dominate. In the early days of backhaul everyone said it's all going to be wireless, it'll be too expensive to get fiber to all of these cell sites. Well somehow as an industry we figured that out. I think the same thing will hold true with um, this technology, uh, small cells, but what we've got to do is realize that there will be cities in unique situations such as a New York City or a Boston where the areas are very dense, big tall buildings and microwave, whether it be microwave or millimeter wave, line of sight or non-line of sight, will be a tool you'll need to have in your toolkit to solve some of the problems of tomorrow. And um, Tower Cloud works with dark fiber networks. Can you tell me about a little bit about what that means? and what kind of work you guys do with it. Yeah, in simple terms, Joey, is we've always built dark fiber networks. That's what our whole network infrastructure is, but we just go the extra step today and put the optronics in the network to light the network. What you're seeing because of all the cost uh, savings that the carriers would like to have and have a little bit more control over their spending, that they'd like to just lease those pairs of fibers, put the optronics on them themselves, and then control their own destiny going forward as capacity and bandwidth grows. And do you see dark fiber becoming more prominent as real estate shrinks, uh, fiber real estate shrinks? Um, yes is the short answer. The longer answer is I think there's more and more people entering the marketplace today. Um, after the telecom bust of 2000 there was a lot of fiber in the ground and we had a surplus. That evaporated over time and there's more people being driven by the wireless network operators and by others to come in and build those fiber optic networks today in mainly uh, large metropolitan areas but also we're seeing some of the tier two and tier three cities have a demand for that. And what we're doing at Tower Cloud is not only building the dark fiber network for the backhaul, we're also building it to support wholesale and enterprise, or we're lighting that same infrastructure on the strands that we retain to provide wholesale enterprise solutions, as well as the dark fiber supports the small cell environment. Very interesting. Well, George, I appreciate you talking with me and uh, you know, enjoy the rest of the show. Well, thank you very much. Thank it was very sir. nice meeting you. All right, George, I just want to say thank you for, for your time and for talking with me and giving me your insights. Now, to close the show, let's take a look at what's going on in the Facebook Tower Groups. As we all know, the anniversary of September 11th was this past Friday. With that, there was many showing their patriotism and remembering those that were lost in that historic day. So I'm going to close the show with some, some of those pictures of, of the men up on the tower showing their gratitude to America and the men and women who lost their lives. Let's take a look at that. 